All right, so welcome to this uh, third video in our series on labor supply. If you haven't seen the previous two videos, they're the past two in the playlist. Um, what we're going to do is take what we learned in the past two videos about making a diagram like the one you see we have set up on our left, where we show the labor-leisure trade-off, and take what we learned in our second video about how when the wage changes, we're going to have a substitution effect that says to do less leisure and an income effect that says to do more leisure. So there's competing effects on how much leisure we take and thus on how much we work, how much labor we supply. And we're going to read this diagram on the left for different wages, specifically for $10 per hour, $15 per hour, and $20 per hour, and use the information here to plot a labor supply diagram here on the left. And in case I don't mention it later, since this is an individual's choice on the left, it's going to be an individual's, Steve's, uh, labor supply on the right. If you wanted a market labor supply curve, you'd need to add up all the individual labor supply curves. So if we did this exercise for Steve's labor supply based on his choices, and Bill's labor supply based on his choices, and Greg's based on his choices, we could add those up uh, and get the market supply curve from, from all the different people. All right, so let's start with uh, a wage of $10 per hour. That's our initial uh, wage, we're told, in black. And the price of all other goods is $5 per good. That's not going to change. So we're going to just keep that and just vary the, the dollars per hour wage. Uh, to make our diagram, we know that the maximum amount of leisure we can have is 24 hours. So this point on the x-axis is, is basically never going to change. And then we'll have it slope up and connect with the maximum amount of all other goods we could buy to get our budget constraint. To calculate the maximum amount of all other goods, we know that this slope is the real wage, W over P, so that's, for our first case, $10 per hour over five goods, $5 per good, so that's two goods as our real, two goods per hour as our real wage, and then if our real wage is two goods per hour and we work all the time, all 24 hours, then we get our maximum amount of goods we can buy is 48. So here's our initial budget constraint. Let's suppose that because this real wage is pretty low, just two goods per hour, that's, you know, that, that's not impressing me. That's not making me want to work much. So I decide, since I'm Steve and this is my labor supply, that I'm going to work, uh, sorry, I'm going to just take a ton of time for leisure, say 18 hours. And that means implicitly that I'm going to do six hours of labor. I'm going to supply six hours of labor. Now let's think about in light blue, if we had a wage of $15 per hour, then uh, our real wage would be 15 over 5, 3 goods per hour. So this point 24, this 24 point's never going to change, as we said before. That's the maximum amount of leisure we can have. But our budget constraint will have a steeper slope, representing that steeper real wage. And we'll be able to buy more all other goods. It'll be 3 times 24 is 72. So our new max is 72. And now let's suppose that I just decide... Now, because this wage is so good, $15 per hour, it's what I've been waiting for, it's what I've been lobbying for, I've been marching in the street for that $15 an hour minimum wage, I'm going to work all the hours I can, and that means I'm going to take very little leisure, so I'm going to do, uh, let's say, just six hours of leisure. So It's kind of ridiculous. I have six hours to sleep, and then I'd work the other 18 hours of the day, but, um, you know, whatever makes you happy, right? And that's what's going to make me happy. Uh, and then finally, we can think about, now I'm going to get a wage of $20 per hour. It's something that I've dreamed about all my life. and never thought I'd get $20 per hour. I'm going to get a new budget constraint with an even steeper slope. So let's just draw that in real quick. Uh, my real wage is now 20 over 5 is 4 goods per hour. So the maximum amount I could buy is uh, 96 goods. And now I'm going to shift and say, you know what? I'm getting paid so much per hour, I really don't need to work so much. I'm going to take a little extra leisure. I'm going to go do like 10 hours of leisure a day. Uh, so I'll put like 10 hours here. Still working a lot, but you know, that's what makes me happy. I'm a hardworking guy. We could go ahead and fill in the number of all other goods here on the vertical axis. There's an implied amount that is associated here with, if I'm taking 18 hours of leisure, I'm working for the six hours that are left over. I'm getting $10 per hour, $5 per good. So with two goods per hour working six hours, I'm getting 12 goods here. I could fill that in. I could do the same calculation here and here. Um, I'll leave that as an exercise for you, mostly because 
sometimes when I when you draw the diagram and you do those calculations you'll find that you know this point here is supposed to be between 72 and 48 but when you do the calculation it might turn out it's not because my graph isn't drawn to scale so it can get kind of messy so I'm gonna avoid that I really don't care about the amount of all other goods the focus here is on leisure and labor so now what we're gonna do is take the information contained in this diagram on the left and use it to plot my labor supply because the information on the left tells me at a wage of ten dollars I'm gonna take 18 hours of leisure which gives me an implied amount of labor so I can plot a point that says if my wage is ten dollars I'm going to do 18 hours of leisure which means six hours of labor so if this is six and that's ten I have one point on my labor supply curve and now we can repeat the exercise if the wage goes up to 15 again not to scale clearly uh, I'm gonna have six hours of work so sorry six hours of leisure that means I'm working 18 hours it's pretty much the vast majority of the day like we said before so that gives us a second point 18 15 uh, so somewhere over here and then finally we get a third point if the wage is $20 up here we will be taking 10 hours of leisure so that means I'm gonna work 14 hours so if I plot that point over here it'll be uh, 14, 14 hours of labor. And then you can connect the dots to say our supply curve roughly looks like this. You know, theoretically you should also, you know, we could do the exercise of saying, well, what about 11, 12, 13? We're just assuming for all of those points, it's somewhere in between what we do at 10 and 15. And what we find here is what we call the backward bending labor supply curve. Backward bending, hopefully the name is clear from the shape, You'd expect the labor supply curve to slope just straight up. That's what we saw earlier in, earlier in the semester. Um, but because the income and substitution effects are competing, we know that actually as our wage goes up, sometimes we, we could work less. And that's what we see between the blue and purple points. When we go from 15 to $20, we actually work less because that income effect is dominating the substitution effect. Whereas between 10 and 15, we get our standard substitution effect dominating income effect. You wanna work more, you substitute more uh, leisure, uh, sorry, less leisure, and the income effect kind of cancels that out a bit, but not enough to override it. So this is a key skill. There were three key skills we reviewed in this series, and um, you know they were all pretty quick, like six minute videos. So it'll probably take a little bit of processing and some practice problems. You need to practice actually drawing these diagrams. It's not gonna click just watching me do all the work, um, but you should have gained three key skills. One is getting all the terminology so that you can un interpret and draw the diagrams like we have on the left, knowing that the slope of each of these guys is the real wage, W over P. Uh, the second skill was building that S-E-I-E-T-E -E table so that you could understand why there's some ambiguity in whether you work more or less as the wage goes up. And the third skill is being able to take what we did in this video, take the diagram we have on the left that shows our optimal choices of leisure and take the implied information about labor and plot it like we have here on the right with our uh, labor supply curve. Thanks for watching this short series. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to email me or text.